Welcome to our four part series on how you can become a licensed Medicare insurance agent. Part one is obtaining your insurance license. This process usually takes about three weeks. Part two, we're gonna go over Medicare certification, which if you're very aggressive, you can get this completed in about three days. Number three is contracting, and number four is client workups. So in this video, we're only going to cover part one, which is the licensing requirements. If you have not done so already, I encourage you to download the free resource below, and it is going to give you links to the requirements in your particular state in order to become a licensed insurance agent. Now, I will let you know that the fees that are associated in that table are from 2023, and I already know that some of them have changed. So whenever you go to the actual link, please use it as the source of truth for how much it's going to actually cost you for each one of these steps. This free guide also tells you whether or not it is required in your state for you to take uh, the prerequisite course, and we're going to get more into that into step two. All right, so today what we're going to do is we're going to cover the seven steps that are required in South Carolina. I'm in South Carolina, so we're just going to click the link for South Carolina and go and visit that website. And once we get there, you're going to see that there's seven steps that are required in order for you to become licensed to sell Medicare insurance. So step one is to determine which insurance license is needed. As you can see that I have circled in red, what you're gonna need is the life accident and health in order for you to be able to sell Medicare insurance. So step one, determining which license you need, you're gonna need life accident and health. Step two is determining, do you actually meet the prerequisites in your state in order to become a licensed agent? For the state of South Carolina, you have to be 18 years of age or older, be of good moral character, not have been convicted of a felony or committed any other act that will cause for denial under this section in the last 10 years, and not have been convicted of a misdemeanor involving deception or crime involving finance or insurance within the last five years. Okay, so what all that's pretty much saying is, as an insurance agent, you wanna be of good moral character because it wants to make sure that you're not being jaded and that you can actually provide the best customer service to your clients, okay? So it would make sense that one of the prerequisites is for you to be of good moral character and not having any misdemeanors or felonies that involve any kind of deception. All right, so that is determining if you meet the licensing requirements, we're going to say that you do. And so now we're going to go on to step three. Step three is all about completing the pre-licensure hours or the pre-licensure education. Now, this is completely optional in the state of South Carolina. If you go back to the link sheet and check for your state, you may have to have so many hours before you can sit and take the life accident and health insurance exam. In the state of South Carolina, you do not. However, I highly recommend that you complete a pre-licensure course. Here in the state of South Carolina, I completed the one through Brewer Insurance School. It was a four-day program, Monday through Thursday, like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then I immediately scheduled my test for that Monday, so I studied over the weekend, and then I took the test on Monday. Now, the reason that I encourage you to take a prerequisite course, regardless if it is required in your state or not, is because it is a lot of information. Now, you can certainly buy the book and go through it and sit before the exam. However, I highly recommend that you take an actual course um, if you're in South Carolina, North Carolina, Brewer Insurance School is there. The other one is Kaplan. Also in the description box below, I have a free resource guide that will have a link to both Brewer Insurance School and Kaplan. And you can see on the website that Kaplan is one of the sponsors for that webpage. Uh, so that's another resource that you can go to and actually get a pre-licensing course. I did not use Kaplan for it, but I do use Kaplan for some of my continuing education credits because you are going to have to have so many uh, continuing education credits to maintain your life accident and health insurance license. Step four, so because you took the prerequisite education course, you're super prepared and you're ready to go and sit for your license. So you're gonna go and you're going to schedule and it shows you here how you can actually schedule. It's $59 per attempt in South Carolina and you're gonna go and you're going to sit and take the exam to pass and get your life accident and health insurance license. So that is step four. You're gonna to need to pass the exam, okay? So you gotta schedule it, take it and pass it. That's gonna be step four. Step five is now it's time for you to submit your application. And we're going to assume that because you watched this video, you took my recommendation and you took a prerequisite course, you passed the exam, and now it's time for you to actually fill out your application and you're going to submit that to NIPR, which is the National Insurance Producer Registry. This registry houses everything that is related to your new life accident and health insurance license. Unsure about becoming an agent? You need. 
this ebook and mini course. Our ebook and mini course will help you be a better agent. Learn from the best, avoid costly mistakes, and get ahead of the competition. Plus, join our exclusive live webinars with Q&A for all your Medicare questions. Don't wait. Grab your bundle now and use the discount code in the video description. Your future as a top Medicare agent starts here. It'll keep up with your continuing education credits. I'm actually licensed in South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, and I can go into NIPR and it will tell me what my continuing education credits and status is and when I need to renew for all of my additional licenses. You can also go in there and update, and you should make sure you have your address and contact information updated within NIPR if there's any changes. So I'm going to complete the application online, for, and it's going to cost you $25 uh, for you to actually submit that to NIPR so that you can go ahead and get the light, your application process started um, since now that you have already passed the test. Step six is you're going to have to complete fingerprints and background check. Okay, so this address on the screen is showing where you're actually going to mail your fingerprint cards to. And for the state of South Carolina, you have to go through Identigo. And so it has the link here where you can actually go and schedule an appointment at Identigo, get your fingerprints done. You're also going to have to give authorization for a background check. And then you take all of that information and you're going to send it either by email, fax, or to the address that's shown on the screen for your particular state. So I really do like this website because it gives you everything that you need for your particular state. It has the links that go directly to where you can actually schedule things like a Denigo for your actual fingerprints. So your application has already been submitted through NIPR. And while that's being submitted and handled, you're getting your fingerprints and background check. If you do not do your fingerprints and background check, your application will not be approved. They go together, okay? So you submitted the application, but you, in order to complete the application process, you have to have fingerprints and your background check completed. And then finally, step seven is you're just gonna wait, okay? You've completed all the six steps that you needed. You've taken the exam, you've passed the exam, and now you've submitted your application, you've submitted your fingerprints, you've submitted your background check, and now all you have to do is wait. Now, the process could take between seven and 10 days for your application to be approved. Once your application is approved, you're going to be issued a license number, and then with that license number, then it's going to set you up to be able to do the next steps in this process in order for you to be able to get ready to sell for Medicare. Part two, we're gonna go over Medicare certification because there's, again, four parts in order for you to be ready to sell Medicare. So if you feel like sticking around, go ahead and go over to part two so that you can see what the Medicare certification process looks like. Or if you already want to just go ahead and stop now, complete part one and then come back and review part two, then that's fine also. If you have any questions, please just drop them in the comment section below and we will get back with you and respond accordingly. Thank you so much for watching.